Art Bell is taking calls on the wild card line at 702-727-1295. That's 702-727-1295. First-time callers can reach Art Bell at 702-727-1222. 702-727-1222. Now, here again, Art Bell. I can sure tell you how to send good spirits. Send flowers. You never mistake those for evil. You never mistake flowers for a bad message. It's always warmth, love, caring, feeling. And believe me, it works. Absolutely Fresh Flowers is the company of which I speak. They sell flowers to you directly from a flower farm. And you get more flowers than you can believe. Miniature carnations, every single color of the rainbow. If there's somebody in your family who's got a birthday or an anniversary or any special day at all, you can't go wrong. You call them. They go out and cut them right there at the farm, pack them up in a big triangular box, and they, they get delivered the next day by FedEx or on the day you specify. Now, think, is there somebody with a birthday or an anniversary coming up? You can take care of it right now. You can say, look, I want them delivered on such and such a date and I guarantee they'll be there. And you'll just bowl them right over. Absolutely fresh flowers. The number to call right now or any time, write it down for heaven's sakes. People call me up panic trying to get the number. The number is 1-800-562-6438. That's 1-800-562-6438. It works. East of the Rockies, you're on Ghost to Ghost AM. Good morning, Semper Paratus. <laughs> How you doing? Where are you calling from? Uh, Jacksonville, Florida. All right. Good to have you. Hey, it's great to be here. I've been enjoying your ghost stories, and it's uh, one of the few times I've been able to tune you in here and everything. Uh, and what what station are you managing to get us on? Uh, WOKV. WOKV. Mm-hmm. All right. And... Just like I said, I've been enjoying your ghost stories and everything. And then after hearing about that great icebreaker you were on, I was an ASM stationed in the Gulf of Mexico out of Houston. Yes, sir. And um, we've had a, a uh, <laughs> I don't know whether to give you the Coast Guard's official version or our official version of some of the stuff we had seen back you, then. You, you tell me what you know. Okay, this was 1980, 1983, right there. We had several experiences of seeing um, what we termed as ghost ships, and it would not never show up on the radar, but we would hear it from, you know, small boats, 41-footers and stuff, of seeing different, like, glowing three-masted type schooner-type ships, I yep. guess what you would maybe call an old pirate-type ship, old, you know, um, sure. ship of the maybe the Continental Navy type stuff or whatever. Sure. And then it would be gone. And generally this would happen like during the time of a harvest moon. And there must be uh, energy connected to things and events, and that's all I can figure. Ships that come back, ships that linger, maybe ships that went down. Um, now I'm going to ask you the opposite. What, you know... What did the Coast Guard say about this? I mean, if you guys would see it and file a report. Um, well, we were filed up put it this way. I was sent for psychological evaluation two different times. Uh-huh. Um, had, well, let's see, the first time I was sent to NASA Bay there and got to talk with some of the Air Force's people and some of the government's people, and they'd tell us, oh, well, you know, what you've seen was an electrical phenomenon that was caused by, you know, different types of gravity and all, you know, just a bunch of junk. Uh, the second time was told it was some sort of fluorescent stuff caused by the ocean. But um, personally, I mean, <laughs> believe me, I've jumped out of too many helicopters and hit that water and some cold stuff and some warm stuff, and that there was a cold that you would never forget. You know, it, it was just that real. I hear you, sir, and I believe you. Very unbelievable, but no, very it's believable not. also. <laughs> I, I appreciate your call. Thank you. Jacksonville, Florida, I do. 
I hear you and I believe you. And you should believe people like that too because these things do happen. It's part of our world unless you turn it off. And I guess you can turn it off. And if you do, in all likelihood, these things will not occur to you or around you or you will not be aware of them and you may laugh at them. And if that's your way of handling it, uh, I, I don't fault you for that. That's fine. West of the Rockies, you are on the air. Good morning. Where are you calling from, please? Fairbanks, Alaska. Listen to KFAR. Way up in Fairbanks, Alaska. Yeah, we're having a heat wave up here. Um, really? Yeah. Oh, it'd be getting, well, shouldn't it be getting cold up there now? Well, we've only got maybe two inches, three inches of snow, about 36 degrees. Real heat wave. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to mention, I don't think anybody's told you, but uh, one of your favorite singers is going to be here this Friday. Who? Maria Moldauer. Is going to be in Fairbanks? Fairbanks, Alaska. Oh, I hope everybody in Fairbanks says hi. Art said hi to Maria. I wish I could go see her, but I work nights. I just don't work tonight. Well, I'm but, sure that just about everybody who'll be going is listening. So everybody, please tell our Art said hi. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, quickly, I got a couple of real short things, and then I got a story. All right. I think God has sent a sign. It's that scream that you are playing that is a Sasquatch. In Australia, they call the Sasquatch a Yowie, and mm -hmm. here in Alaska, they don't call it a Sasquatch, but they call it Carry Man. They call it what? Harry Man. Harry Man. Well, okay. Harry Man, and they've got a good article in the uh, That's Alaska magazine, mm -hmm. which I should I should put one in an envelope and send it to you. I would I would very much enjoy that. I think you would. Um, anyway, the story is about a truck a semi that had been in a wreck and killed the driver, but there was no trailer attached to it, and the truck was repaired and put on a lot, and it was sold. Well, every time it was sold, the person that bought it would bring it back and said they couldn't drive it. Something was weird with the truck. They huh. kept bringing it back every time. Finally, one lady bought it. She wanted to get into the trucking, and she dealt with it. She just had to prove to her family and everyone around her that she could survive in the trucking industry. Right. And I may miss some of this because I read this in a, in a little trucking magazine thing. Right. But I think it happened in Kentucky, and every time she went by, she'd get a cold feeling over her shoulder every time she went through this one area. Hmm. So it was like the truck was beckoning her to go through here or something. Right. And as it turned out, the guy that got killed in that truck had left his trailer somewhere, but it was never found. It was never traced. They could never find it. But he had parked it next to a cliff. And somehow the cliff gave way, and it buried the trailer. And every time she went by this area, she got a cold feeling in that truck. And finally, the rains or something washed that truck, and it showed it. And she somehow got hooked up to that truck, and she took that truck to its final destination. And ever since then, that cold feeling in that truck disappeared. Wow. Now, is that a story? That's a story. But I was... Sitting in a semi, I don't remember where, a truck stop, reading this, and I just got cold shivers all over me when I read this. I can imagine. And I couldn't wait to get through. Well, I'm glad you made it through, sir. Thank you. And again, yeah, that's weird. It's like, do you think uh, it was the spirit of the person who originally had that truck? Or, or are machines... And things, energy uh, in the sense that people have energy, or maybe in a different but similar sense. I don't know. So many questions, so few answers, huh? So many questions. On our first time caller line, you're on the air. Oh, Mr. Bell? Hi. Oh, I can't believe I got through to you. You made it. Where are you? Uh, I'm the unknown caller. But I'm west of the Rockies. Okay. All right. Hey, um, I'm listening to your ghost show, and I listened to you last year, and I thought it was great. That's why I'm staying up tonight listening to it. Yes, sir. I'm an atheist like Mark. Yes. And uh, there's a lot of things I don't believe, and I listen to these ghost stories, and I throw them away. But there was something that happened to me, like when I was 20 years old, I had a roommate, 
and she was a single mother. We lived in a two-bedroom apartment, you know, totally platonic and everything like that. And one night, in the middle of the night, she comes blasting into my room, crying and screaming that she saw her father, her dead father, standing over her sister's casket. And her sister was just, you know, like 18 years old. Mm. And her sister wasn't dead. And she said her father was telling her, your sister's going to be hurt. She's not going to die, but it's going to be close. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm going, well, anyway, I calm her down and, you know, get her back into bed. And um, Anyway, the next day, we get, get a phone call from her mother saying that her sister was uh, seriously injured in a car wreck. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, go to the hospital and everything and see her, and she's like in ICU, you know. I mean, sure. Barely hanging on by a thread. And I never gave much thought to it, you know. Uh, okay, her sister pulled through and stuff. But um, it's always bugged me that, that like, the day before the accident happened, uh, my roommate came in and screaming and crying that she saw her, her deceased father over her sister's casket, it, just right there in her bedroom. So it, it, it bugs you? Yeah. Then you're not an atheist? Well, you're I an, always... You're an uh, agnostic. Um, no, an agnostic is just a gutless atheist, I've always thought. <laughs> but uh, I'm listening to your show again, and this is bringing up stuff that there's stuff well, that I we don't, don't know. I, yeah, I, that's the whole point. I mean, how can you listen to this? You know, these are serious stories. As you know, I treat it seriously, and so my callers do. And how can you listen to this and not become a gutless atheist? Well, yeah, that's exactly right. I, you know, I don't believe everyone calls your show is a liar. They're not. These things are stuff that happens. These things do happen. Yeah. I appreciate your call, sir. I thank you for the call. I mean, how can you be? How can you listen? And then how can you say there is nothing? When we die, we just simply pass into blackness, into nothingness, that this life all goes for naught, that the energy that is our being beyond our physical bodies is not, does not exist? I don't think so. No, I'm sorry, sir. You sound more like the gutless atheist you described. Or put more uh, uh, digestibly, an agnostic. The 818CS by Sanjin is verifiably the best radio in the world for the price. And it is virtually a total communications receiver inside the body of a portable. It covers AM, FM, shortwave. It does so in continuous coverage, one or five kilohertz segments. Now, I know this is going to cause a lot of eyes to glaze over out there. But if you want a good emergency radio, if you want a good, all-purpose, very sensitive, selective radio with expensive filtering, wide, narrow AM filters, an RF gain control, a BFO, again, the, gl- the eyes glaze over, right? And you're saying, what the heck is he talking about? Well, when you get this radio, whether you use it for good AM reception, talk shows, or you use it to bring the world to your shortwave, Radio Australia, Radio Moscow, Radio Havana, Radio France International, whatever it is, don't buy a cheap piece of junk uh, because you'll regret it because you're going to love shortwave. And then you're going to realize you should have bought a good radio in the first place. Well, this is the best for the money. It's got a built-in cassette deck, 45 one-touch memories, a large LCD display, an RF uh, signal strength meter, battery check, a million features I could never describe to you. It's got a built-in cassette so you can record anything, shortwave, FM in stereo, which means you can record all your favorite music, take it to the car, and play it. That's it. That is the Sanjin, and we know we've got the lowest price in America. How do we know that? Bob Crane will 
if you present him with an ad showing a lower price, he'll match it. No sweat from his brow. Nobody has yet done it. <laughs> this includes shipping and handling and, of course, the uh, very now famous Sea Crane Company guarantee. These are good people. It means, for example, if there's anything wrong with the radio, they're shipping you a new one before you have sent them the old one. It is a remarkable ethical company, and they'll stick with you, and if you get stuck and need help, they help, unlike so many others these days. The price, including shipping and handling, two twenty four ninety five. The number to call beginning at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Time is 1-800-522-8867. That's 1-800-522-8863. Many of you health-conscious folks are familiar with antioxidants and their amazing health benefits. Now, vitamin C is probably the most famous of these. UCLA scientists found that antioxidant vitamin C can help avoid cancers, strokes, heart attacks, increase life expectancy an average of five years. Well, now, there are new antioxidants on the market. And listen. Scientists say they are 20 times more powerful than vitamin Z and 50 times the power of vitamin E, another antioxidant. They're called pycnogenols, the super antioxidants. You want to remember that if you're a health-conscious individual. Why? Well, according to Richard Passwater, Ph.D. and authority in the field, you're being bombarded by something called free radicals, toxins, environmental and otherwise, that break down cells damaged tissue, cause you to age faster, develop stiff joints, and wrinkle sooner than you ought to. How can you fight these free radicals that bombard you every day? Antioxidants and pycnogenols are the most effective antioxidant you can buy today. To order this amazing new food supplement I'm taking, call the folks at Health Naturally at 1-800-856-1119. These pycnogenols are pharmaceutical grade, made from 95% pure grapeseed extract. It's a very purest on the market, giving you the most benefits. Call 1-800-856-1119. That's 1-800-856-1119. All right, back to it we go. And on the wild card line, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning, Art. This is Judy, and I'm in Oregon. Okay. And I wanted to tell you that uh, we live in a haunted house. Oh, now you do? Oh, yes, we do. We have for about eight years. Uh, Would you turn your radio off for us, please? Yes. Matt, turn the radio off. Yes, Matt. Extinguish it. I'm sorry. That's quite all right. All right, so in what, what form of manifestation do you get? Well... When uh, we bought it, we, it's a, actually an antique store, and we live upstairs. And when we bought it, uh, I moved in before my husband did to get things straightened out. And the first day I was there, I went and was cleaning and everything, and it's on the second floor. And I went out the back door onto a porch area and uh, was shaking out some rugs and... Uh, all of a sudden, the door slammed behind me, and uh, it's a very large store over about 8,000 square feet, so mm -hmm. I'm up there all by myself. It's getting dusk, and I couldn't get back in. Oh, boy. And uh, it faces the river, so there's I don't have too many neighbors. Finally, I did notice somebody next door about 20 minutes later walking around, and I'm yelling and screaming to him to come help me get out sure. back inside. So he did come around and jump the fence, and I had left a door open downstairs, found his way upstairs, and lo and behold, he says, how did you get out there? And I says, well, I went out through the door. I have a deadbolt on that door, and he had to open the deadbolt to get me in. <laughs> so, And that was the first of many, many experiences, and... Uh, well, Other I've always wanted to ask somebody this, and so I'm going to ask you. Yes. Why, pray tell, are you still there? <laughs> well, it, uh, they're, not, they're not anything but uh, pranksters. I don't, I'm not afraid of them. 
So it's more of a sort of a pulling tricks on you kind of deal. Yes, yes, because another incident was downstairs we have things like, um, you know, the Jim Bean decanter bottles. We oh, sell yes. those as collectibles. And uh, we went down, and it's on a cement floor. And one morning we went down, and there was six of them in a circle on the floor, about four feet from the shelf. Mm. So things like that happen all the time, and people are there when they happen, too. I wonder in the paranormal world what a circle of booze bottles means. <laughs> I, I don't know, but uh, they're <laughs> young people, and I'm sure they don't have ID cards. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the call. Thank you, Art. You take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> and I'm sure they don't have ID. East of the Rockies, you're on the air on Ghost to Ghost AM. Hi. Hi, Art. This is Angela in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Hello, Angela. How's Cheyenne? Ah, uh, cold. Cold. <laughs> yeah, I hear it's starting to get cold up there. It is. Um, there was a guy that called earlier, and he mentioned something about Effie Warren. Yes. Uh, I wanted to say it is haunted. I've heard several stories uh, from out there. About the airbase? Mm-hmm. It's here in Cheyenne, and it is haunted. Well, any place where many deaths have occurred, um, particularly a combative kind of death, is a place where spirits linger. Yeah. I just wanted to plug that real quick, and then I had a story that I wanted to tell you. Okay, real quick. <laughs> um, I guess about six months ago, my little brother came over to my house and he was telling me uh, that a friend of his, she was a young lady, newlywed, had two really, really young children, had just found out she had cancer and she was going to be passing away soon. The doctor didn't give her more than about two weeks. All right, I'll tell you what. That's a good cliffhanger. We're not going to be able to finish, so I'm going to put you on hold. Okay. And let you hold, uh, you won't hear anything. Don't let it worry you. Uh... So my brother was really devastated about uh, this young lady when he found out that she was passing away. He was a friend All right, get, get into that telephone and talk up now. Okay. Um, anyway, is that better? That's a little better. You've got to stay into it and talk. Project. <clears throat> okay. So my brother was friends with this lady, but I didn't know her. And, right. uh my heart really went out to her, though, thinking that she was going to pass away and leave those two young children and uh, her husband behind. And I kept thinking about her, and I just I couldn't get her out of my mind, like day and night for, let's say, four or five days. And I was standing in my bathroom, and uh, I felt something really strange, like almost a, a finger or something go across the top of my head. And I put my hand up there, and there was... Some kind of like a sticky goo on the top of my head. You'd been slimed. <laughs> but my husband said too. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got a good sense of humor. I don't know if it had anything to do with her, but it was just really weird. Well, it might have. Uh, but it's a good slime story, and I, I thank you for bringing it to us. We get one at least one every Halloween. There is something about ghosts or entities or whatever you want to call them that many times involves a kind of strange slime. So when they did Ghostbusters, uh, they kind of did a play on that, but uh, there's nothing to play with. West of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hello. Hello, Art. How are you? I'm okay. Um, I don't have an actual story, but I actually wanted to um, answer kind of a question you asked earlier about Ouija boards, like um, whether or not one could get them, and you might find this pretty scary, but um, apparently it's been, it's marketed by uh, Parker Brothers. Actually, not like I think a couple days ago, I just saw a commercial about a bunch of kids playing Ouija boards. Really? Yeah. So it's well, like, I mean, like that's fine. Uh, I guess you can get them. If you want to get them, go ahead. My advice is don't do it. I, you don't have to tell me. Actually, I kind of think it's a stupid thing that they're doing. I'm I'm an occultist myself, so I, I studied this field, and so. Okay, I really see, think... Look, it's just a board. If Parker Brothers wants to uh, sell it, that's fine. It's like sitting down. It doesn't matter whether, in my opinion, whether it's a Ouija board or some other instrument that you're inviting, uh, you're you're concentrating on, and you're consciously inviting an entity to you. You know not what you do. It's not like Monopoly. It's not like playing Monopoly where you're worried about getting a hotel to wipe the other guy out. 
You're sitting down to consciously invite an entity to direct you. It is not a good idea, whether it's a Ouija board or whether it's a, a, a Monopoly board or anything else. If the intent is to invite something in, you be damn sure you think hard about it before you invite something in you don't want to keep you company. First time caller line, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I want to speak to Bart. Bart. Uh, this is uh, this is Bart. Bart Simpson. Art. Um, turn your radio off, please. Yes, I just did. Mm -hmm. Okay, go right ahead. Hi, Art. Hi. Yeah, I've just um, oh, so weird. I just got. Um, it's not really a ghost story. It's about my brother who died, and um, he died like maybe about five years ago. And uh, when he was younger, he had a car wreck, and um, I guess what you'd call it a near-death experience. He uh, was in the hospital for a long time. Yes. Um, and um, I'm kind of nervous. I'm sorry. I can tell. That's all right. Yeah. Um, I can feel his presence now. When he was younger, he had a near-death experience. And uh, it's, um, I think he... Uh, uh, and since he um, lived, I always thought he was like special. But he always said, like you know, he's he's just, it's not special. He thought it's like everybody had the power. Well, why did you think he was special? Um, he was always interested in kung fu and the things like uh, martial arts and the power of the martial arts uh, contribute to uh, um, like um, extra strength and. Well, I don't know about that, but it does, thank you, contribute to a concentration, and the martial arts uh, focus you, and whenever you focus, you can run into something you might not expect. Here's an interesting fact that just showed up. Art, I just got off work, and it took me a while to settle down and a couple of stiff drinks so I can tell this to you. I've been home for about an hour now, and this is just exactly what happened. Let me start out. I work at a hospital emergency room. Consider myself a level-headed guy. I do, did not believe in ghosts, that is. Tonight I was riding my bicycle home from work. In point of fact, I was listening to you, reminiscing that it had been about a year since I'd been riding home at night, alone. It's been almost one year to the hour since my old riding buddy was killed while riding alone on this same street last year. We generally had rode together all the time. On this particular night, I'd called in ill, stayed home. My buddy Phil was run over by a drunk driver, not found for an hour or more, and died en route to the hospital. His blood stains still mark the curb where his head struck, snapping his lower neck. Tonight, while riding home, I became aware of a feeling of having something like the sound of a car tire behind me, and yet there were no cars on the street. I kept hearing the sound, kept looking around. The sound got so loud I could hear the you know, through the radio. In other words, I was listening to the radio. I finally took off the headphones, stopped, and looked down the street. I saw Phil standing on his back next to me. As fast as light, I got on my bike and sped home. Phil stayed with me until I reached the crossroads where he died. I swear, I saw him, big as life. I can't tell you if I was having a 60s flashback or not. West of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hi. Hello there. Hello. Yes, sir. All right. Yes. Uh, I wanted to give you a little story about my experience with the Ouija board. All right. Where are you? This is Dan from Fairbanks. Yes, Dan. Uh, I was about uh, 18, just graduated from high school, and this girl and I were playing with the Ouija board one night, and uh, didn't think much of it, and I went home, and uh, woke up the next morning, and I had a big antique Chinese mirror that sat on my dresser. It was 
Oh, probably three foot by four foot. Probably weighed about 60 or 70 pounds. Mm-hmm. When I woke up, this mirror was sitting right at the foot of my bed on the floor, face down. Well, I didn't think much of it, except that I had a bunch of model cars uh, that I had collected and built, and some bottles of cologne and stuff sitting on top of my dresser, and nothing had been disturbed, which meant that for this mirror to get where it was, it would have had to have been lifted up off of the dresser, over everything that was on the dresser, moved about two feet from the dresser, turned at a 90-degree angle, and laid face down on the floor. <laughs> well, and that, that, that next night, we played with the Ouija board again. Went home, went to bed. Early in the morning, about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, I hear this big, loud crash. I wake up. The mirror's in the same position on the floor, in the same exact spot, with the mirror broke into 100... There were so little pieces, and everything on the dresser was laying all over the floor. <laughs> Needless well, to say, that was the last time I ever touched a Ouija board. Good for you. Uh, thank you very much. Again, you invite things in when you do that, and you don't know what you're inviting in. It's like opening a door to a world where things exist, good and bad. Do you invite strangers into your home? Do you call on the street uh, when somebody passes and invite them into your home, not knowing them? No. Then why would you want to do it with a Ouija board? Anyway, you may need a good night's sleep after this morning's show, and I have a sponsor that can sure provide it. <laughs> it's called Select Comfort. Uh, select is the key word. Comfort's important, too. It's a bed like any other, king or queen, and inside are individualized air pockets where springs used to be. Instead, they've got these air chambers, I guess I ought to call them, and they are inflated or slackened by your electronic command, and you've got a little electronic control. On both sides of the bed, now it gets even more unique because each side of the bed can control the bed uh, to be either stiff as a board, if you've got a bed back the way I do, or soft as a feather bed, or individually on, you know, from night to night, you can make it conform to your body. It is select comfort, and we don't expect you to buy out of the blue just based on what I've said. I've given you the outline. You call them. They'll send you a free videotape, and then you can take a good look. If you decide you want to buy it, then you get a 90-day in-home risk-free trial. The number to call to get the videotape to take the first step is 1-800-448-5700. That's 1-800-448-5700. Now, money. Pretty important in this terrestrial world, eh? When you look ahead in your life, do you see a cushy retirement with lots of money? Or do you see yourself barely making it? Are you working nine to five now? Putting away a lot of money, are you? Saving it? No? Well, you might want to meet Ken Roberts, and we can introduce you. He is a financial investor and educator, and he's known around the world in 89 countries for his honesty, integrity, and something very special. His unique ability to teach people just like us how to invest in commodities with minimum risk. We've talked to a lot of people like Tim in California, a Learjet pilot. He made $30,000 profit. Bob in Utah, retiring from truck driving after he made $48,000 in his first year. Now look, commodities are usually regarded as a very risky venture. But not with Ken Roberts. He'll teach you how to invest. And you invest on paper until you're confident. And then you'll just throw the paper away start using money. Because, you know, you, who wants to be losing that kind of money? That's how confident you will get. Now, we will send you what is called a money kit. A 44-page report and a cassette tape free of charge. You look it over decide if you want to give it a try. Call Ken Roberts Company. He's got a good number, too. It's 1-800-GOLD-KRC. 
gold, as in that that glitters, and KRC, as in Ken Roberts Company. Again, 1-800-GOLD-KRC. How many of you remember a time when you could take a penny to the corner grocery store and there you could buy a nice piece of candy or even a postcard? Well, of course, today the convenience stores have a bowl of pennies on the counter with a sign that usually says, take one if you need one. Can the dollar be far behind? You know, you really can't buy anything for a penny anymore. In fact, a dollar will only buy what a dime would a few years ago, the only form of money that still buys what it did once before is gold. Over a hundred years ago, an ounce of gold was worth $20. For that, you could buy a very nice new suit. Today, that same ounce of gold is worth nearly $400, and guess what? You can still buy a really nice suit. Today, you need to have some gold in your investment portfolios for protection and profit. My friends at North American Trading will be happy to show you how you can own gold in privacy and safety. It's really simpler than you might think. Call 1-800-877-9799 and ask for their free information. Investors have always turned to gold during times of inflation and economic uncertainty. Don't wait till it may be too late. Call 1-800-877-9799. You don't have to be rich to own gold, just smart. All right, uh, back to the lines we go. Now, uh, I want to say again, if you would like a copy of this show, this particular program, we do offer copies of this. It is a yearly event called Ghost to Ghost AM. And the way to get a copy of it is to call 24 hours a day, 1-800-917-4278. That's 1-800-917-4278, 24 hours a day. East of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hi. Hi, Art. This is Robert from New Orleans. Hello, Robert. First, let me say I got your book yesterday. Oh, you did. I am very, very happy. I'm. Is, is that... Tell everybody, I, I've really not been soliciting comment yet, but is that one quality book or what? Oh, yes, sir, it is. It's much better than I thought it would be. Well, there you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, we'll, we'll do a day later this week and solicit comment. Anyway, um, it is ghost to ghost night. Okay, Art. In New Orleans, I, I, I guess you know we bury people above ground here. I've heard. Right. Well, um, my grandmother's mar- uh, buried in one of these uh, old cemeteries. Yes, sir. We go and we clean them out every so often, you know, clean up around them and weed them. And me and my younger son will go walking and looking for the dates on each one of these uh, tombs. As we're going through one day, we notice that a couple of them have been broken into. So we start looking into them and we're seeing that, uh, you know, the bodies have been disturbed, the caskets are open or broken or chipped out in corners. Oh, boy. As we go to one of the oldest ones, which is about a block down from my grandmother, it was an eight-year-old girl who died during the time that there was a bad scarlet fever going around in New Orleans where thousands of people had died. Yes, sir. As I climb up to look in there, I notice there are two bodies in there, but these are recent bodies, like a day or two. You mean like the people who had been desecrating? Uh, yes, that's exactly who they were. There was two of them, two young men. One face down and one face up. The one face up had an expression on his face like you've never seen in your life. Um, I ran and told the, uh, the keepers of the ground, and they called the police, and the police came and everything. And uh, wow. two weeks later, I had called to ask, you know, what had happened to the guys. And it's as far as I can tell, both guys had died of heart attacks. And the one who I saw, I'm sure, died of fright. And they said the coffin when a little girl had been in was course opened it was a metal coffin at the time and uh they said they guess they were robbing it at the time and something happened that scared them to death <laughs> oh my god what a story you that's a true story oh yes it's very true uh, my my son talks about it all the time and every halloween it's the first thing we start telling the rest of the family about oh well thank you for sharing that with us and I, no i really do mean that thank you but that is a scary story yeah, it was. Uh, it so still bothers we, me once in a while. We now. can only imagine what they saw. Uh, I know what they saw. They, that little girl took her revenge when they tried to break into her coffin. Jeez. <laughs> Thank you for the call. All righty, take care. Arthur. Take care. <laughs> West of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hello. Oh, hi, Art. Hello. I'm there. Mary from Bakersfield. Hi, Mary. How you doing? 
Oh, pretty good, but that one did scare me. Oh, boy. That, that, oh, <laughs> I can boy. just imagine that. Uh, if I'm mine a... scared me, that one scared me more. <laughs> <laughs> now, right. this happened when I was about 18, 19. It, it was about 3.30 in the morning, I guess, and it was winter time. Kind of like about now. Well, no, it's not cold up here yet. No, I meant the time. It's a little oh, before yeah. 4. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I was asleep in bed, and I woke up, and I was sleeping on my left side, and all of a sudden I woke up, and I turned over to my right side, and I was facing the door of the bedroom, and being cold, I had the habit of throwing the covers over my head. Well, I did that this time, and all of a sudden, about maybe two, three minutes passed, and I started getting scared, very, mm-hmm. very frightened. Mm-hmm. And I tried to come out from under the covers, and I couldn't pull them off. And, I mean, I clawed at them and just pulled, and I couldn't. Oh, I wouldn't like that. And all of a sudden... Covers some... are supposed to protect you. Well, these didn't. Well. Since then, I've never slept with the covers on my head ever since then. <laughs> I but get, I... all of a sudden, oh, there was a scream in my ear, just a shrill scream. That my head just, you know how you feel when you're, you've been screamed in your ear when you were small before, you know, kids. Sure. And my head just, uh, I mean, it just vibrated the way that scream. And I try to call my father and I'd open my mouth and nothing would come out. And I'd just be open and gasping and trying to call. And finally I managed to just say, Daddy, just barely got it out. Yes. And when I said that, then the c- covers came off. I was still trying to take them off, and they came off all of a sudden. And, well, like I said, ever since then, I just do not sleep with the covers over my head, not a sheet. Not my dear lady, I have, I've heard a lot of I jumped onto the cover story. Well, stories, don't. but I have <laughs> never, never, never heard I went under the covers and then tried to get out, and the covers wouldn't come off. That's they would not. I know. They just would not come off. And like I said, I still do not sleep under with my head under the covers anymore. I can't say I blame you, but it's like, gee, there's nowhere to hide. Well, hide under the bed. <laughs> there's no place. Get underneath the bed or someplace. <laughs> well, but... look, I, I appreciate your story. It is uh, unlike any I have ever heard. And I'm afraid it's going to have to be the topper for the... Uh... Uh, for the day, I'm afraid. Uh, well, I'll be. You know, the night just kind mm-hmm. of flew by, as it were. Well, I've been trying for quite a few years to get in. This is the first time I managed. You've been trying for years? Well, about four or five years. <laughs> I kind of wish you wouldn't say that. It discourages people. Oh, it I'll... shouldn't because I finally got through. We'll see. There you are. All right. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll Goodbye. Tell you. All right. Well, wait a minute. Wait a but... minute. Wait a minute. There's there's a tradition here. Oh. With our last caller. Oh. You get to say. Good night, America. Oh, good. Good night, America. (laughs) (laughs) Take care. Well, it has been fun and a little scary. But you tend to get what you ask for, and I wanted scary stories, and you all did not disappoint me. That last one from New Orleans kind of got to me, though. At any rate, uh, again, I want to remind you to get a copy and archive of this program stripped of the commercials with only the frightening content remaining (laughs) you can call 1-800-917-4278 let me give you that number one more time 1-800-917-4278 thank you all who joined us during the night and all I guess I can say is (laughs) from the high desert. Good night, America.